Hi, this is part nine of Introduction to DMX Lighting, and this one is going to talk about MIDI. So there's two parts in configuring MIDI, enabling the MIDI inputs and outputs through the software menus, and physically connecting the MIDI ports. Uh, to enable MIDI on the Behringer LC2412, you press the Utility 2 key, then More. Uh, you select the MIDI option, and then you select channel 01 and enable both Send and Receive. When enabled, it should, be, it should display uh, what we see here is the in with a greater than and less than sign, and out with greater than and less than sign. MIDI physical connections on the back of the lighting board, there will be two MIDI connections out and in. Uh, just as displayed here, some boards will have a USB port for MIDI use, the more, more newer boards. Uh, the confusing part is that MIDI cables are sometimes later labeled with in and out or arrows. The out of the cable goes to the end of the lighting board and the end of the cable goes to the out of the lighting console. Uh, if the MIDI is not working, just swap the MIDI ports. A PC to MIDI connection. In the old days, you'd use a plug-and-play uh, or plug-in MIDI card and you, or use a serial port. Uh, now you can use inexpensive USB to MIDI adapters. If you have a USB lighting console, then you just connect it USB. Uh, the latest adapters are plug-and-play and require no drivers to be installed. Installed. They work for both PCs and Mac, and they're pretty inexpensive. Ten bucks, twenty bucks gets you a, a plug-and-play connector. Uh, MIDI sequencers and DAWs. So a MIDI sequencer is a software program on a computer or a standalone keyboard unit that puts together a sound sequence from a series of musical instrument digital interfaces, which is what MIDI stands for. And what it is is the advanced or operation. So they could be like pressing a key or playing a note. A digital audio workstation is an electronic device or software app uh, that you use to record, edit, and produce sound files. Uh, most software DAWs incorporate a MIDI sequencer as part of the program. To capture MIDI events, this will be part one of it. I uh, use a software DAW that has a MIDI sequencer built in. I use a Cakewalk, a free version. There's lots of free versions of DAWs now that have MIDI support in them. Uh, make sure that your lighting board MIDI ports are connected to your PC. Um, there will be some configuration on your software to say that uh, the ins and outs are going to your MIDI device. Uh, that's up to you and the software you're using. Uh, you create a new song in the in the DAW, uh, create a blank MIDI track in the sequencer, and configure the blank MIDI track for record mode and start recording. As you press the flash keys on your lighting console and move the phaser, faders up and down, the MIDI events will be recorded in the MIDI track. It's actually pretty easy. Um, you can insert labels at each event um, that you recorded on the track to keep track of it. And this track becomes a library of commands, of MIDI commands for controlling your lighting board. So basically you're recording uh, what your lighting board is doing, and then later on you can play it back to the lighting board and it'll respond with uh, whatever can commands you have. So you can see here I've uh, labeled it flash one. So when I press the flash one key, I got a MIDI uh, event occurred there. Right? If you actually move a fader, you'll see a fader will be uh, a, gr a gradual series of bars increasing and then decreasing down. Uh, you can record a lighting show live. Uh, you got three options um, or a combination of to use as music sort source. Uh, record a line input to your PC. Right? You can with uh, the DAWs you can record live music using line in or a mic. Uh, you can play a MIDI song file or you can play a music file. So the example here shows an analog music file and I have a lighting board MIDI events track on top of it. Uh, you set the lighting board MIDI track to record, start playing the music, and as you control the lighting board in time to the music to match it, the MIDI events will be recorded in time with the music. And then you have a track that uh, matches your music and you can move uh, the events around you just sort of capture them and move them if they're not exactly where you want uh, sometimes you get strange behavior uh, when you have your midi connected to your board you should be aware that the lighting board may become confused it's 
might exhibit unexpected behavior. Uh, the MIDI connection may conflict with the manual operation of the board. The MIDI is telling the board to do this while the physical slides and buttons are telling it to do something else, right? Um, and as I said, the lighting board becomes confused. Uh, as an example, if you gave the MIDI command uh, to basically black out, nothing is going to work on the board because the MIDI is telling it to black out. Easy uh, solution is just pull the MIDI connectors. Uh, there is a, a really nice tool called MIDI Aux, and uh, it allows you to capture raw MIDI data. So if you're more smart on MIDI than I am, you can uh, capture the MIDI data and you can actually program a, a, a sequencer um, with this information. So MIDI Aux is a, a really cool program. Uh, you, you monitor the input and what you do is you press uh, uh, a function on your lighting console and it, the MIDI uh, monitor input will show you what the uh, results are. And then you can use that information to program uh, a sequencer. That completes part nine of Introduction to DMX Lighting and that completes this series. Thank you.